Do you have a can of chicken in your pantry? Or maybe you just love shelf staple pantry friendly food like I do. I was afraid of canned chicken for a long time, but now it hence, tends to be one of my favorite pantry friendly meals to go to. So basically I don't have anything in the fridge. What are we gonna make? We're gonna use the canned chicken. I always like to keep some on hand, quite a bit on hand as you can see. We are making the best canned chicken recipes today. I have two new ones for you, three old favorites. You're gonna love them, enjoy. So today we're just gonna make up a simple chicken and corn chowder, which is like the perfect like summertime soup treat. I personally love clam chowder, like New England style. Um, this is gonna be very similar. You wanna start by chopping up a half an onion, but as I always say, if you don't have that, you can just use a tablespoon of, or maybe like a teaspoon of onion powder um, once you get things started on the stove. We're also gonna need two stalks of chopped celery and two cloves of minced garlic. Again, if you don't have them, you know what? If you don't have celery, don't put it in. I like to buy celery on sale, actually dice it up and then put it in the freezer and then you have it anytime you need it. So that's just a good little tip there. And then the same thing, garlic's super, super cheap. So I always recommend buying a bowl, but the grocery store, it's like 50 cents. But if you don't have fresh, you can always use garlic powder. Again, about a teaspoon. So you wanna start by sauteing six slices of sliced up bacon. I like to actually cut mine with kitchen shears and you wanna saute those until they're completely crispy. And then we can add in the onion and the celery if you're using it. Give that a good saute for about five minutes. You wanna make sure that it's soft. To that, you wanna add a quarter cup of flour and we're just gonna keep stirring that while it's cooking and make sure it doesn't burn to the bottom of the pan, maybe a minute maximum. And then you can add in those two cloves of garlic and kind of mix that in. The next addition is uh, chicken broth, about four cups, and you can use chicken bouillon here. I wish I had defrosted mine because I have some in the freezer, but I just didn't think about it ahead of time. So I had a container that I had bought on clearance. Either way, it's fine. You can always also, like in this situation, if you don't have either, go ahead and use some water and salt and it will still be okay. Whatever works for you, uh, go ahead and do it. You want a can of corn or you can use frozen corn or fresh corn. I just drained a can of corn because it's super cheap. And then to that, you're gonna add a cup of heavy cream or you could use like half and half or I've even in this case, sometimes swapped out like milk or almond milk and it usually turns out fine. Sometimes if you do like a milk instead of like a heavy cream, you can actually just put in like a little bit of potato flakes, like the instant potatoes, or you could even just use a little bit more flour to kind of thicken it up. For seasonings, you just wanna add about three quarters of a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and then a pinch of cayenne pepper if you'd like. And then you wanna peel and cut, which I didn't get on camera, but three russet potatoes and put those in there as well. And we're gonna bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna turn it down to low, cover it just like kind of halfway covered and cook this for 15 to 20 minutes until those potatoes are fully cooked through. This soup comes out absolutely incredible. My husband, who is not a canned chicken fan, had zero idea that there was canned chicken in this. And it was really hearty as far as like the amount of chicken, the potatoes, everything. It's great in the summer. We had it with um, some shrimp rolls, so fun. So much better than going to the restaurant, but also would be a great wintertime meal as well. Just so incredible, so much flavor. For this next recipe, we're making chicken flautas. And I did look up the difference between a flauta and a taquito. And apparently it's actually just the size of the tortilla. So flautas are made in larger tortillas. Starting with three ounces of softened cream cheese. So I just put this in the microwave and it's like all nice and soft now. I have one 12.5 ounce can of chicken breast. This is actually gonna be like half of um, what I would make, like if I was making probably enough for everybody. I have a couple recipes I'm making today, so I'm just making like half of this recipe. I'm just gonna put my chicken in here. I think it's fine. Some people do like to kind of like rinse their canned chicken. They say that it gets rid of some of the flavor. So if you're one of those people that um, needs that flavor gone, then uh, I would rinse it. I'd give that a, a chance. Adding about, it's probably a little more than half a cup of shredded cheese. I always feel like I have like bits and pieces of cheese around. I had to grab like some sliced cheese from my from my refrigerator and just like grate that up to add to the last tiny bits that I had of some shredded cheese. I didn't have any blocks left, so it's just I just use what I have, you know. Don't don't go crazy. Don't be like, oh, I don't have this, you know. Even if I had like half this amount of cheese, I would probably still make these. And then you could always even just like add in, like if you have a block of cream cheese, you could just add more cream cheese and do less shredded cheese. 
these are just options, things that you can do, right? You want about a sixth of a cup of salsa. Now, I'm just trying to use this salsa up. I don't know if anybody has tried this. It tastes really good. It's the on the border roasted jalapeno salsa verde, but it's very, very thin. And so like, it's really good for cooking, um, but it's not like great to get on a chip. So I've just been trying to use it in like things that I'm making that are Mexican flavored uh, and it's worked out really, really well, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it for chips. So I probably wouldn't buy it again, unfortunately. I don't know what's up with that. Why is it so thin? Then you just want a, it's like almost like an eighth of a teaspoon of cumin, like super small. Same thing with chili powder. I gotta put garlic powder on the list cause it's like, I go through this stuff like it's going out of style. That's it, it's the last of it. Same thing with onion powder, just a little sprinkle. Just gonna mix this up. And then you can use whatever type of tortillas you have. You can get, their Dollar Tree has great ones. I happen to have these carb balance ones. I'm gonna do um, four of them. We'll see how that turns out. I think that should be the right amount. So double would be eight, which makes more sense for my family, um, but we're gonna be having a couple things. So I just didn't wanna overkill it and just try some new things, right? And I was thinking about it. I'm like, if you are like keto or low carb, these are like accidentally low carb with a low carb wrap. And then this is all, low carb so hey an accidental low carb delight so you just want to do your best trying to figure out how much to put in them i don't want them to be like too thick but i think this is right and i just have a cookie sheet and you want to place them seam it side down this actually ended up making five of these and these are rather large so i almost wonder if we could eat all of these for dinner um but don't worry we'll have plenty of other goodies benny's playing over there if it's loud I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees for 18 to 20 minutes until they're super crispy and delicious. These crisp up so nice. There is tons of flavor in these. I love that mixture of cream cheese and cheddar cheese. They end up nice and crispy on the outside and my kids loved them. Mm-hmm, you like it? Good? For this next recipe, we're gonna make chicken salad roll-ups. And I'm gonna start off with a half an avocado. These are great for either a lunch, a dinner, or just for make for snacks for the week or as an appetizer. And I'm actually going to make an appetizer for uh, my mom's birthday. So I'm gonna make half the recipe just because we are gonna have a lot of other things too. Just need half an avocado. I'm gonna combine that with one and a half tablespoons of Greek yogurt and three quarters of a teaspoon of lime juice. If you don't have Greek yogurt, you can always use sour cream or I think even mayonnaise would taste just fine in this. And you also wanna add a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Now my avocado wasn't super ripe. I had even placed it in a paper bag overnight. If you don't know that trick, you should just place your avocado in a paper bag and it should ripen it up. Now it ripened it quite a bit, but it wasn't quite there yet. So you can see me kind of struggling. However, the flavor was there. It was still really good. It just took me a little bit longer to mush it up. Now I am super bummed because I lost the footage here, but the meat of this salad for the roll-ups is a quarter medium red onion chopped, a half of a red bell pepper chopped or minced, one tablespoon of scallions minced. And I just used one larger can of canned chicken or you could use two smaller cans of canned chicken. And I'm looking at the recipe now and I'm like, it said to add cheese. Did I add cheese to this? I don't know. I don't think that I did. I'm pretty sure that I forgot, which is fine because it tasted absolutely delicious. So if you remember or you have cheese, go ahead and add a little over a quarter cup of shredded cheddar and I'm sure it will taste amazing. To assemble your roll-ups, you know, you can use whatever size tortilla you want. I have a preference for the extra large ones when it comes to this because it just makes it easier. You can just do less roll-ups. It takes less time. You just want to spread a layer of your chicken avocado mixture on top of your tortilla and then roll them up, holding it tightly together with your fingertips. Half of this recipe made two large tortillas worth of salad. You just wanna slice them into one inch pieces using a sharp knife. Or honestly, you could make like a wrap, like a roll up with this and eat that as a lunch too. So delicious, but they are really beautiful when you cut them into those pinwheel shapes. Next up, we're making mini chicken quesadillas and these are so cute, so pretty. I just wanna eat them every day. They are so amazing. They are total crowd pleaser. You wanna get started with one large can of drained chicken, a third a cup of your favorite salsa, 
one and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese. This is kind of what makes it right. Chicken, cheese, salsa, that is everything. If you have it and you like cilantro, go ahead and add a quarter cup of fresh cilantro leaves. I did not have that, so unfortunately I didn't get to add it, but I would have if I did, because I do love cilantro. I'm gonna give that a good mix and open a can of refried beans on the side. Now take street tacos, I'm using flour street tacos. I feel like those hold up the best in this situation. And you actually wanna put the refried beans over the entire taco. When I first started, I tried to put it like on half of it and then put the other half to be the chicken mixture and I found that they were flopping open. And then I realized that you're supposed to cover the entire thing with the refried beans because it's almost like a paste to keep it closed, which really, really helps you out when you're cooking. So it's worth it to cover the whole thing in refried beans. It's kind of like the glue to hold the whole thing together. These are just such a great finger food because it's kind of an all-in-one. You can just pick it up kind of like the original uh, barbecue chicken recipe. You can make all of these kind of ahead of time before you start cooking them. And you can set your oven to warm so you can keep them warm till guests arrive or so that you have some refills for your plate. You wanna cook these on the oven over a medium heat. You wanna melt some butter. I like butter for mine, but you can use oil or a spray, whatever, whatever your favorite is. And then you can just place as many as you can in the pan. A griddle is also a great idea for this because you can cook a lot of them at once. And that's why I picked my largest skillet so that I could do this. And you wanna cook them for about two to three minutes per side. You want them like golden, crispy brown. You know, you don't wanna burn them, but you do want them to be crispy. And that's why these turn out so great with the flour tortillas. I just feel like they crisp right up. It doesn't take too long to kind of make them, flip them. And then, like I said, keep them warm if you want, or you can serve them right away. I served mine on a plate with some sour cream and guacamole, and they were just so fabulous. It was so, so delicious. And it's just such a kind of like crowd pleasing wow factor, something that you can kind of make at home pretty easily and serve to friends. These are actually even great just for a weeknight dinner because that's what we did for them. And the kids were like, these are so good. And just like, you know, you want to keep, <laughs> you're like, I need to stop eating them, but then you just keep eating them because they're so little and so cute, you know? We're gonna get started with barbecue chicken crescents. And these are so easy and so delicious. And I would even say you can use leftover chicken or leftover turkey with these. It doesn't have to be canned, but the nice thing about canned is you kind of always have it in your pantry, right? I'm just starting with one large drained can of chicken. It's about a cup of chicken. And then you wanna add a quarter cup of barbecue sauce and you can use some seasoning with it if you'd like. I just ended up using some Auntie Nono's steakhouse seasoning, or you could use like one of those McCormick mixes or you don't even have to use any at all. Separate your crescent roll dough on into eight triangles on your pastry sheet. I'm using the Hawaiian rolls just because that's what they had at my Aldi, but you can get whatever type you like. It's gonna be good with anything. Then you wanna spoon the chicken mixture onto the triangles, and then we're gonna sprinkle about a teaspoon of shredded cheddar cheese over the top of that, and then roll them loosely as directed on the can. So they're not gonna be like completely closed up. You just wanna roll them into like little crescents that kind of go around that chicken mixture. You wanna brush them with an egg wash. So I just took one egg, mix that up with my brush, and then just brush that over. It's gonna make it look really, really pretty. And then I ended up sprinkling a little bit of the Trader Joe's everyday seasoning over mine, but I think that everything bagel seasoning would also be really good or any of your favorite seasoning blends that you wanna put over the top, you can go ahead and do that, but totally not necessary. And then we're gonna bake this at 375 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. It's gonna depend on your oven, so make sure to check on them after 12. I think mine were probably more like 13 minutes and they were this golden brown, so delicious. They were really very, very good. And I love that they're just like finger food. That's such a nice appetizer where you can just grab have something, kind of chat with somebody. You don't have to worry about eating with a fork or even a toothpick. I want to thank you so much for watching today. For some more pantry friendly inspiration, go ahead and check out this next video and make sure the next time you're on YouTube, you're watching Meals with Maria.